Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Tremors Cast. I'm Jonathan Melville and I'm the author of the upcoming book Seeking Perfection, The Unofficial Guide to Tremors, which I'm writing to celebrate 25 years of Universal's 1990 film Tremors in 2015. The book will go behind the scenes of the first film and all of its sequels, plus a 13 episode TV show, interviewing the cast and crews and offering insights into all aspects of the franchise. These podcasts will be very short, no longer than 10 minutes each in length, and they'll feature the latest book news and audio from some of the 50 or so interviews I've carried out for the book. This episode, you'll hear from S.S. Wilson, the co-writer and co-creator of Tremors and its sequels, and the director of Tremors 2 and 4. The big book news this week is that I interviewed one of the stars of the first Tremors film, Heather Gummer herself, Miss Reba McIntyre, who told me about her experiences making the film, plus the reasons she didn't make it into Tremors 2. Full details will of course be in the finished book. I've also managed to track down a batch of photos for the book that were taken on the set of Tremors in 1989 and not seen anywhere else since. They're in Los Angeles just now, but should be making their way to the UK any day. Now, here's some of the audio from my S.S. Wilson interview, which was recorded in 2011. As I mentioned before, he co-wrote all four films and episodes of the TV show. He also directed Tremors 2 and 4. I started by asking him how he got into filmmaking. My dad um, encouraged me to do it. I took over the family 8mm camera many, many years ago in the 60s and uh, became the one who took all the movies. and, And from there... I got interested in uh, animation because my uncle knew how animation worked. Animation worked. I did. I didn't understand it, and mm-hmm. he demonstrated it for me. So I began doing stop motion. So I did that for years and years through junior high and high school. And the, and the interesting part of the story to me is when I uh, when I went off to college, I my dad was a psychologist, and I signed up for psychology because I didn't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. And my dad came up to see me the first week of college, see how I was doing and so forth. This was in Pennsylvania. And he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm taking pre-psychology courses. And he said, why? (laughs) He said, you've been making movies since you were 12 years old. Why aren't you doing that? I said, well, I don't know. I had literally, it must must seem very strange to people now. I had never thought about making movies as a career. So my dad went to my counselor and changed all my courses to whatever they had, which was not much way back in those days, but they had some film courses and television courses. And that changed my life completely. I never I never looked back. <laughs> right. At what point did you sort of start um, doing it uh, professionally then? Or did... It took a long time. It, you know, it, it's a hard road for anybody. And, mm. and uh, I got drafted. This was at the end of the Vietnam War and also. And uh, I did not go to Vietnam. I, went, I was kept stateside. And they actually took advantage of the fact that I knew filmmaking, so I ended up making educational films and stuff while I was in the army and doing ah. TV shows. Uh, and then out of there, from there, I went to USC for graduate film school because I thought maybe that would be a way in. Uh, and I I did public service spots for free, animation spots for PBS stations and whatnot. And then my first real professional work was coming out of USC, some friends and I began making educational movies. Again, way back in the day, they used to roll a projector into the classroom, you know, Mm -hmm. and screen 16 millimeter films. And uh, we made those and uh, we did pretty well at it. We we worked for two or three different companies that distributed the films and and sometimes we produced them. In one case, we produced it ourselves because they they didn't, they weren't interested in the idea. They didn't understand it because it was a stop motion based idea. And that was something that they were familiar with that movie. We actually made quite a lot of money on because they didn't produce it. We produced it and, and, and took a, a share of the pro- and shared in the profits, which we had done that more often. We would have for a long time. It was the most money I had ever made. Okay. And then, uh, you know, and then from there, uh, my writing partner and I, longtime writing partner, Brent Maddock and I, uh, we would write spec scripts every so often. And we wrote, wrote s- separately and together six or seven. I can't even remember. And hang on, I'll deal with that. Okay. And then I, um, and then one of them finally sold. For, so for many years we made educational films. At least five six years we were doing this, and then uh, we 
what was it? I guess in the early 80s, we sold uh, Short Circuit finally. One of our spec scripts finally sold. We had, <laughs> I had actually was about to give up writing spec scripts and stay doing stop motion animation and stuff because I was enjoying myself. I wasn't making a fortune, but I was doing stop motion, making these little movies. Yeah. And I thought, well, that'll be my career. That's perfectly fine. And then much to our surprise, having been turned down by everyone and turned down by agents, we could never get an agent or anything. We... Uh, through a friend of a friend of a friend, Short Circuit got to the producer, David Foster, and uh, suddenly, three months later, <laughs> it was in production. I was also keen to know where the idea for Tremors came from. Well, so Tremors came out of two things. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, I'm the sci-fi buff of the team. Brent, Brent wrote a book on Jacques Tati, for example, the French filmmaker. <laughs> He comes out of a different kind of a school, a more artistic school than I. But I'm the kid who spent, you know, I read all the comic books and I and I watched all the B movies. And Tremors grew out of two things. One, uh, and I'm sort of only half answering your question here, I think. But yeah. uh, uh, it came out of one my experience as an editor. I had a for for about a year. I worked as an editor for the Navy, the U.S. Navy, who had a, a base in the desert. It was all very complicated. They have this enormous base in the desert, in the Mojave Desert, where they test things. And um, and I got a job as an editor out there for a brief time. And on the weekends, the ranges that they would shoot at during the week were open to the employees. You could go wander around. It was a wonderful experience because it was pristine desert. It had been sealed off since World War II. Mm. And there's all kinds of exotic stuff out there, old abandoned you know, hot springs and wild horses and whatnot. And I'd wander around out there, and uh, I was sitting on this rock one day, and I um, that I these big boulders, very much like the ones in Tremors. It's fairly close to where we shot Tremors, actually. And uh, I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if there was something that could move through the sand like a fish, and I couldn't get off this rock? And I jotted that down, and it went into a file folder. This is a long time ago. This is 1975 or six. Right. And um, that was the scrap of paper that eventually came out when Nancy asked us, you know, go into your idea folder. So then Brett and I sat down to talk about that idea, and I said to him, well, it's a very 50s kind of idea. It's a very sort of giant ant kind of idea. So we looked at those movies, and we said, well, what could we do that wouldn't be that exactly, but that would that would hark back to that? And And here's how it came about. This is actually how the humor came about as well, because we didn't start out thinking it would be humorous as it was. We said, well, what if n none of the cliche characters who populate, those, especially the American version of those monster movies, well, it, the cliche characters in those movies, there's, there's always an expert on hand to solve the problem yeah. because of the, the way science fiction found its way into the movies. There was always a, a scientist, there was a, a sheriff, there was somebody, you know, a National Guardsman. There was always somebody who showed up, figured out what was going on, and took charge. And we said, what if that person wasn't there? What if this, a small town was attacked as they are, an invasion of the saucer men and any other movie you want to name, them, and that person wasn't there? There was no sheriff and there was no scientist yeah. to explain everything. And that's how Val and Earl came to be. We said, what if the, the, mo the only people to solve the problem are the two local handymen who they look to to solve all of their problems. Thanks to SS Wilson for that interview. It's just a taster of what will be in the finished book. I'll have more news and previews in the run-up to publication over on the blog at tremorsguide.com, on Twitter at tremorsguide, and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash tremorsguide. Feel free to get in touch via email at tremorsguide at gmail.com. Finally, thanks to Amelia Rivera Allegra for supplying the music for the podcast. You can find more about our work in the show notes for the podcast. Until next time, keep watching the ground.